Okay. All right, we're back. So let's talk uh, today about photography and video when it comes to real estate and staging. Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? Where would you like to start? Yeah, so um, real estate photography is one of the most important things in marketing your home. And anytime I talk to anybody, any client, I always tell them, make sure that you have a good photographer. That is going to be one of the most important things in getting your home sold along with the other steps that we talked about. Um, the number one thing is that all people nowadays start their shopping online. So they're going to go to their favorite website, whether that's Zillow, Redfin, wherever else they're looking at houses, and they're going to start looking at homes that are for sale. Um, and if your house doesn't pop and doesn't look good in pictures, people are just going to scroll past it and they're going to keep moving because there's a lot of inventory out there. There's a lot of homes on the market. And if you don't capture the buyer's attention online, they're probably not even going to come to your open house. Um, so getting the home staged, of course, is part of, of the good photos. But what always blows my mind is when people pay for staging and then they take photos themselves or they have a terrible photographer who doesn't know what he's doing. And to me, it's sad because it feels like such a waste of money. Like, of course, it's still going to help for open house for that, you know, face to face emotional connection. But your photos is what's going to capture your buyers in the first place. That's what's going to bring traffic into your home. Um, and to your open house. So making sure that your photos are good is going to be a key ingredient in getting your home sold. Um, so what are some things to look for? What are um, things that show whether a photo is good or bad? So one of the main things is having good lighting. For that, you also need to make sure the photographer has good equipment. Um, so if the home is darker, especially this time of year in the winter, it gets dark out early. The photographer usually has multiple homes the day they shoot. So by the time they get to yours, it might be getting dark out. Um, if you don't have good lighting in the house as like naturally with lights, windows, then your photographer should be bringing in extra lights, a good flash, maybe some umbrella lights, whatever else is needed to really make the home look bright. Nobody wants to live in a dark cave. Um, bright, airy homes are the most attractive. So making sure those photos are really nice and bright is really important. The quality of the photos is also based on the equipment of the photographers. So having a really good camera that is gonna get really clear, crisp, beautiful photos, um, as well as making sure that the colors in the photos are very natural and light. Um, I see a lot of photos that it looks like maybe the equipment wasn't that great. So then they try to edit it to make it look better. And the colors are all distorted. You know, the grays are now browns and the greens are like lime green and where you're like, okay, nobody's grass looks like that, <laughs> you know, and it really turns off a buyer because then they just start wondering like what in this picture is actually real, you know, if it's like overly edited. Um, so the quality of the photos is just crucial. Um, but choosing a good photographer is more than just them having good equipment because anybody could go out and buy, you know, thousands of dollars worth of equipment and call themselves a photographer. But knowing how to photograph a space is something that's actually kind of hard to learn. Um, real estate photography is very different than you know, portrait photographer, somebody who photographs nature, somebody who photographs people, they're all a completely different art and skill. And um, there's some photographers who just kind of vent, want, want to venture out and experiment. And, you know, maybe they photographed people their whole career and now they want to try shooting houses. And it is very, very different. The equipment is different. You have to use different kinds of lighting knowing the proper angles to use, all of these things play a big role in getting a good photo. Um, for example, when shooting a house or any kind of real estate type photography, it's really important to 
A, get a good angle of the entire room. So like a really high quality fisheye lens or something like that, wide, wide lens where you're gonna be able to capture most of the room in a photo is really important versus, um, you know, a phone, iPhone photo where you got one wall or a corner of a room. It's really hard for a person searching online to envision what that room looks like if they can only see one wall. You know, it, like, is the room big? What does the flow of that room look, feel like or look like? Um, what, how much furniture can you fit in there? It's hard to tell with a close-up picture. Um, also, like, shooting at the level of a person is pretty important, um, if that makes sense. Like, sometimes people will photograph from, like, the top of a corner, and it's kind of going down on the room. Sometimes it's good if you're just getting an overall photo, but if you really want to get those, like, emotional connection type photos, you want to have somewhere, it's kind of at the level of what a human would see a room as. So it kind of almost gives you this flow of walking through a space. So if you are in that room and you're walking through it, what would you see? And um, those photos really do turn out extremely beautiful and really capture a person's attention because that's how we view the world. That's how we see things. And so that's how you naturally are going to connect to it versus seeing, you know, some really far away, weird, stretched out photo. Um, so those kind of angles and things like that play a huge role. Um, you know, photographing a bathroom, a small room is really difficult. People don't realize how much skill that actually takes and good equipment. Um, try to take a picture of a tiny bathroom with your phone. It's not going to turn out. It's going to be a picture of a sink or something like that. So um, being able to shoot it from a certain angle with the proper equipment where it actually captures most of the room is really important. Um, mirrors, a lot of people don't know how to photograph in a room with lots of mirrors where you're not going to have a flash in one of them, you're not going to have equipment showing. Um, that all takes a really skilled photographer who knows what they're doing to get a really beautiful photo where it's not like a cheesy one where you can see like the legs of the camera, you know, in the mirror. You see those a lot and they don't look good. And, you know, a lot of people think, well, why do you need such extravagant professional photos? Like it's, it's just you know, like you're just selling a house. It's not a big deal. This isn't going in a magazine or something like that, but it really does matter because you are trying to capture somebody's attention just like they are in a magazine, um, you know, and, and this is probably your biggest investment you're selling. And that's what I always remind people when they're selling their home and they don't want to put money into preparing it for sale. Like you or have you sold anything more expensive than your house? You know, like this is a big investment. You want to get good money out of it. So put some effort into it. You know, I always bring up an example, even let's say you're just getting rid of stuff at your house and you're selling, I don't know, a chair on offer up. You're probably going to clean up that chair and you're going to take a really nice picture of it, you know, from different angles and you're going to post it yet there's people who are selling their house and they don't even do that. It's like you're selling a chair for 20 bucks or your house for 600,000. You know, what, what should you spend more time and money and energy on? So getting back to topic, yes, the photos are very important. Um, and you are trying to, you know, really put your best foot forward on that. Um, so then other things with photography that you want to look for, um, of course, like I said, making sure it's a talented photographer who knows their angles, their lighting, things like that, but also edit, editing. Not everybody knows how to edit, and it's very apparent when you start flipping through photos who is good at it and who is not. I have worked with lots and lots of photographers because um, a lot of agents want to work with their own, not with mine, and I'm okay with that. And then when I see the photos, Oftentimes I'm extremely disappointed. Um, with editing, some of the main things I look at is, are they over editing a photo? Like I mentioned earlier, you don't wanna oversaturate the photos where your orange is now like neon and your green is like lime green and your blue is like, 
you know what I mean? Like you don't, you don't want it so extreme that it doesn't look real anymore. Um, you know, oftentimes they'll see like the fireplace is going, which you always want your fireplace going in photos. And then the fire is like this bright orange where it literally took over the entire photo. Like your eye just immediately goes towards this like bright orange thing in the photo or a plant that's lime green. Like your eye is going to go there and that's not what you're selling. You know, you're not selling the fire or the plant that's on the table. You're selling the room. And so you really want it to feel cohesive. You want it to flow and for all the colors to be similar, you know, kind of neutral, not like one thing is really standing out and then the other thing is kind of washed out. And right now the big trend is these really light and airy photos. And um, a lot of photographers don't really follow up on trends. You know, they just kind of do their own thing. They've been doing it for a long time. They're good at it. But unfortunately it's not really the style anymore. And so they'll edit rooms where they um, will oversaturate the colors. They will uh, over, I, I'm, I don't know the editing terms, but they will make the, um, like the clarity, like over the top where you can like see every grain in the wood and things like that. And it's like really distracting in photos when you're looking at it. All of a sudden the floors look dirty because it's like, way too much like contrast um you know the cabinets look really extreme like that they, they don't look like that in real life you know the wood is like looks like a completely different color um and those those things probably are some of my biggest pet peeves when I look at photos like I see them like th these photos are completely unusable I'm not going to post them anywhere because that's not what a my furniture looks like b that's not what that home looks like like people are going to come in, they're going to be disappointed because they just got catfished, you know? <laughs> like, that's not what that's supposed to look like. Um, so the edits are very important. You know, they should just be very doing very minor editing because they should have good equipment, which means they shouldn't need a lot of editing. You know, just brightening up the picture a little bit, maybe adding a tiny bit of contrast if they need it. You know, getting rid of things in the photos that are not good, like, I don't know, some cable somewhere is showing they can edit that out you know having a, a good photographer who can fix things like that in a photo is really important because you can't always have the house looking perfect when you're photographing it but if you have a good photographer it could, could still look perfect same with weather we have really bad weather for a very long time over here <laughs> so having a photographer who can edit the skies is pretty important being able to make it look like it's bright and sunny in the pictures even though it's not is really helpful because it does play a part in that emotional feeling. You know, when you're looking at a dark, drab, gloomy day photo, you kind of feel that way versus a bright, cheery, beautiful, sunny day and makes you kind of feel happy. And so it, it does play an, a role in the way people feel about the picture. Um, and then what else? So with angles, another thing, I'm kind of backtracking here, but another thing that I notice is photographing in a way where you are really picking up the focal point of the room. So sometimes they'll see a picture where it's like, what is, what are you taking a picture of? Like, I'm not really sure what the point of this picture is. You need to pick what the most important part of a room is, whether that you, it's in the kitchen, that might be the beautiful stove. Maybe they have a brand new beautiful stove you want to show off. Maybe it's their amazing huge island or countertops, or if it's in the living room, maybe it's their beautiful fireplace. Having a focal point in a picture is really important and making sure that that focal point stays the focus in the photo and not like a photo of a random corner, you know, where it, things are cut off. Um, speaking of cutting off, cutting off things in photos drives me insane. You know, it's like an awesome picture and then randomly a corner of the couch is cut off. Like why not move the photo a tiny bit over so the whole couch is in the picture? You know, and somebody who is really skilled knows that. Like that's just kind of the rules of photographing something. You don't have random corners of things cut off. Like one leg is in the picture, one leg's not, you know, things like that. 
Um, and my favorite, my personal favorite, is when a photographer can also take really fun pictures, like creative shots. So I think it's important to have a good mixture. So not just like, okay, I have a fisheye photo of every single room and there you go. To be able to give that emotional connection to a person, you got to put in something fun, you know, like a close up picture of some really cool piece of decor with like the fireplace in the background or something like that, like creative shots. You need to mix in at least a few of those to kind of spark that emotion, you know, cause just seeing a room, if the room is beautiful, that should hopefully already cause some kind of an emotional thing. But especially for women, you know, there's statistics that, that show that women are usually the first ones who start doing the shopping, you know, and then they'll kind of bounce the ideas off of with, with their husband or their significant others. So with women, we really like our fun little things or decor, tchotchkes, stuff like that. Um, you know, feeling the seeing and kind of being able to feel the texture of different things in the room and stuff like that. So being able to photograph that and make, really make it look beautiful, like, like you would in a magazine or on Pinterest or on Instagram or whatever. That's the kind of things that's going to really like, wow, you know, spark that emotion in a person and then they're going to want to go to the open house and see it in person um is there anything i'm missing I'm trying to you covered a lot i do have a question um how do you feel about video and those 3d walk through things where they take the photos and make them uh, is video necessary are 3d walk through things necessary is it all just nice additional uh, obviously the, the photos are the foundation but do you, do you also think that's important as well so I have kind of mixed emotions on it. I think that, of course, like you mentioned, photos are the main foundation of it. That's the staple. Um, videos, I think, are really cool. And same with the 3D walkthroughs. They are a little bit more pricey. So I see it done more on the really expensive homes, like the multi-million dollar homes, because A, multi-million dollar homes are a lot harder to sell. You know, there's not as many people out there looking for a $3 million house versus a $700,000 house. So being able to attract people, you have to try a little bit harder. Also, when somebody is wanting to spend that much money, they really got to love the house. You know, like if you're going to spend $2 million or more, like you better freaking fall in love with this place. And so in that case, I think people need to go above and beyond what the average homeowner would do. So those 3D walkthroughs are really cool for that. Having a really nice video that they can look at in advance is, I think is really great. It's just a really good marketing tool. It's not required. It's not necessary. You know, I, I'm not even sure if some of those you can even post on all of the different platforms. Um, but it's just a great marketing tool. And just like anything else you do out there, the more marketing, the better. And so if you're selling a really expensive home, I say, go for it. Why not? I mean, it's not going to hurt. It's, it's not, um, it's not going to be like a waste of money. In my opinion, I think marketing is always worth it. But if you're selling like a very average, you know, home, anything below 700,000. I don't know if it's necessarily worth the money to do that. Um, although I didn't mention earlier, but drone, drone photography, I think is really cool and pretty important nowadays. Um, what I really like about the drone photography from for exterior is it really gives people a good idea of the neighborhood and the yard and the land. So especially if you have acreage, um, or you're in a really cool spot where maybe you have a park just down the road, you know, or you're near the water or something like that. Having a drone photo is going to be really important to um, show off that selling part of the home, you know, that it's like a selling feature, um, the neighborhoods and things like that, that really is, you know, location, 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 right? That's the most important thing in buying a house. And so if you got something cool in your backyard that you want to show off, get a really good drone photo. Um, and I see it nowadays on all houses, not even, not only homes that have land or acreage, but 
on any house because it does give people a good idea of what your chunk of land looks like, you know, who your neighbors are, how close they are to you, um, the size of your yard, kind of what's around you, things like that. So I would say drone photography is more, a little bit more important, but then when you're getting into those higher up homes, um, those videos and stuff are really cool. Um, I've, I've done quite a few houses where they do them. And the nice thing about it is it really gives a good layout of the home. You know, where's the photo? It's like, here's a picture of one room. Here's a picture of another room, but a walkthrough or a video, it, it gives you the flow. Like, where are those rooms in the house? You know, so you're walking in your living room off of your living room. Is there a bedroom there? Or is there a bathroom? So you really kind of get that really cool flow so you know exactly what you're getting you know it's not just oh that's a really cool room except why is it off of the kitchen you know kind of thing but now you have a, a really good feel for what that's like awesome and uh how do you go about finding a good photographer or do you have uh, certain ones that you work with all the time or recommend or you know, if somebody's looking and they, they want to know how to choose somebody, you, you kind of outlined the things they need to have, the equipment and the, the, you know, but how do you, you know, how do you go about finding them? So recommendations are always good. Go off of a, you know, some from people but besides just anybody you hire or anything you buy is you're going to look at, um, examples of their work reviews. And if your realtor is like, oh, I always use this photographer, say, oh, okay, well, I would love to see some photos. Because just because some somebody uses that person, it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to like their work. Everybody kind of has different tastes and styles and preferences. And sometimes we will work with somebody just because they're affordable. Um, and unfortunately you know you pay for it and if the realtor is paying for it then oftentimes they just kind of go with the lowest bidder and that's not always going to be the best thing so looking at their photos um, of their prior work and reading any kind of reviews they might have asking around um, those are probably are going to going to be your best bets and unfortunately sometimes People don't do that and then they are really unsatisfied and they have to get it rephotographed. And I mean, how, how hard is it to ask somebody, can you send me some albums of, you know, your previous work and just quickly take a glance over it? Um, it really, it's not that much work, but it could save you a lot of time and money in the long run. Yeah, cool. Well, I guess if people want to learn more, what do they do? They just go to brilliantstaging.com, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have a couple of really good photographers that we work with regularly. Like I said, I have gone through hundreds of different photographers, and I have a couple that I just absolutely love their work. And um, if you ever want a recommendation, reach out to us. I will refer people um, and help in whatever way I can answer any questions. We're, we're always here. Cool. Hey, thank you. That was awesome, Tanya. This is really good. I, I think we covered everything, unless there's anything else you want to add about photography and whatnot. No, I think we covered most of it. But if you have any questions on anything, if maybe I didn't elaborate enough, definitely reach out, send me an email, a Facebook message, whatever's easier for you, text message, call me and we'll discuss it some more. Cool. Thank you.